Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Now, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Binding of Isaac. An action-packed adventure that sees you crying over monsters while navigating a randomly generated dungeon. The randomness in the map and encounters is an aspect of the creation that makes it so popular. For if all rooms and monsters were always in the same place at the same time, then once the final boss defeated, many would see no real point in returning to that world. So randomness can be key in keeping things fresh, interesting and replayable. And that is the topic of today's video. Begin creating a random dungeon generator. We will take as inspiration the Binding of Isaac and try building a simple system that will get our own game rife with random dungeon mayhem. Now note that this is the first tutorial in what will be a mini-series of three videos, since there is quite a lot to cover and I don't want to weigh you down with a bloated 20-minute video. Lastly, I coded and put into place this system with beginners in mind. In other words, very basic Unity and C-sharp knowledge is all you need to follow along. With that said, let's ponder what our dungeon mustn't and must have in order to be fun, cohesive and actually playable. First of all, we want our dungeon to have a start and exit room. This exit room can then be home to a monstrous boss, treasure or both. Secondly, and also of utmost importance, we need a clear path between the start and exit room. In other words, the player should be able to navigate to his destination without getting stuck. And lastly, our dungeon must be closed meaning there must not be any opening leading to nowhere. With those three crucial points in mind, let's jump into Unity and begin creating our random dungeon generator. So you'll see that I've put together a bunch of different rooms and all they're really made up of are white square sprites that act as walls. To keep things simple, all rooms have the same size. 10 times 10 units wide. To place your walls in a clean and precise way, you can head over to Edit, Snap Settings and change the X and Y move values to 1. Now by holding down Control on your keyboard and moving your sprite, you will see that it snaps of 1 in the X and Y directions. The room with doors in all 4 directions is my entry room. This is where I will like my player character to start his adventure. I then have rooms with a door at the bottom, top, left, right, left and right, and so on. I name each room with one or two letters, each letter signifying the door's position. For example, a room with an opening at the top and bottom will be called TB. T for top and B for bottom. A room with a door to the right will simply be named R, R for right, and yeah, I think you get the picture. Lastly, with each door comes what I call a spawn point. So a room with a door to the left will have a spawn point placed 10 units back in the X direction. This is where another room will be spawned. Obviously, a room with multiple doors will have multiple spawn points. For a concrete example, let's take this room with a door to the top and to the right. I'll create a new empty game object, make sure it's parented to the actual room and call it spawn point. I'll make sure it's positioned right at the center of my room. We will now create a new C-sharp script call it room spawner and drag and drop it onto the spawn point, so we won't have to do it later. Also create a new tag called spawn point and give this newly created object that tag. Let's then add a simple 2D bot collider set to trigger to our spawn point and a 2D rigid body set to kinematic. Lastly, I also recommend that you give your spawn point a coloured gizmo so you don't lose sight of it in the dark and mysterious scene view. Now we can grab our translate tool and since we have a top door, 
increment the Y position of our spawn point of 10. I'll then duplicate that spawn point, bring it back to the center of my room, and this time, for my door to the right, increment the X position of the spawn point of 10. With all that in mind, you can now pause the video, create a bunch of rooms, each nicely named and with their own spawn points. Then make a prefab out of each room. So make a folder called prefabs and drag and drop each room into that folder. Then delete all rooms from your scene except the entry one. We can now begin coding. I'll open up my room spawner script and create a public int variable called opening direction. Now this is key. For each and every spawn point, we will have to set a value for this opening direction variable. One will mean that that spawn point will have to spawn a room with a bottom door, two a top door, three a left door, and four a right door. For example, take the entry room. For the top spawn point, we will type one because we need that spawn point to spawn a room with a bottom door for the two rooms to be connected. For this right spawn point, we will type in 3 because we need a left opening for a connection. For the bottom spawn point, we'll type in 2 for a top door, which will, once again, connect the rooms. And lastly, I'll type in 4 for the left spawn point because I need that spawn point to spawn a room with a right door. Alright, back in monodevelop, I'll create an if statement inside my update function and check whether opening door is equal to 1. If it is, we will now write a simple comment stating that this spawn point will have to spawn a room with a bottom door. We will follow this with else if and check whether opening door is equal to 2. If so, we will want to spawn a top door and so on. With those if statements in place and some comments to give us an idea what we must next do, I'll wrap up the video. Episode 2 of the series should come out in 2 or 3 days, so stay tuned. Until then, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also consider joining the Blackthorn Pro Discord server and following me on Twitter. Alright, have a great day, see you very soon, cheers!